Last week, I was over at Waswater in the Lake District. It's a great location for autumn photography, and I've managed some nice shots in the past. But this year, things are different. The weather wasn't great, and I'm about four weeks too early, although I did know that when I booked my trip. You can see from my starting image that there isn't much colour in the trees yet, but I do need to use this shot. In this video, I'll share with you some techniques you can use to enhance the colours of an autumn scene with the Nick collection. I shot the image in the RAW format using a Panasonic G9 Micro Four Three camera and a Leica 12 to 60 lens. That's a 24 to 120 mm in full frame terms. It's a handheld exposure of a tenth of a second at f/8 and ISO 200. I then converted the RAW file to a DNG file using DXO Pure RAW, applying a lens correction and deep prime processing. This should give me good image quality as a starting position. After using DXO Pure RAW, I open the DNG file in Photoshop, where I'll be using the Nick collection as a plugin. My next step is to convert the image to a smart object. Then when I apply the Nick collection filters, they work as smart filters, meaning any changes are non-destructive. The first Nick plugin I'll be using is Viveza, which I'm going to use to warm the colour of the leaves in the trees. Now I'm using Viveza 3, which is part of the new Nick Collection 4. If you're using an earlier version of the Nick Collection, then you'll probably have Viveza 2. There are some differences between the two, but you can still use control points and the warmth slider as I'm going to do. When Viveza opens, it detects that I'm working with a smart object and displays an information dialog box, which I'll close. I can then use a control point to select the yellow leaves in the trees. To help me see what's happening, I'll turn on the mask view. I can use this to help me position and size the control point to create a selection. The areas selected by the control point are those shown in white. What I'm trying to do is select the leaves that I want to turn to a golden orange. Now because this is Viveza 3, I have two new sliders which I can use to refine the selection. These are controlling how close a match an area needs to be with the centre of the control point for it to be selected. When I reduce the luminance slider, it widens the luminance range being selected by the control point. The chrominance slider does the same, but for colour. Here I'm going to increase the slider to narrow the range of colours selected. When I'm done, I can turn off the mask view. It's then time to increase the warmth slider which shifts the yellows to become more orange. I'll also increase the contrast in these leaves to make them stand out more from the others. If you find the warmth slider doesn't create quite the colour you wanted, try adjusting the green and red colour sliders. You can use these to increase or reduce the amount of red or green in the selection. I like the effect the adjustment's having now on the trees, and I want to apply it to other areas of the image. I'll do this by duplicating the control point using the icon below the control point list. Now I can move the duplicate control point into position on the lake. The surface of the lake was looking too green to be a realistic reflection, but this warms it nicely. Then I'll duplicate the control point a third time. This time I want to position the control point to select the leaves on the ground at the side of the lake. When I click the compare icon, you can see the difference these simple changes have made. Now I could continue with the Vaser to select more trees, turning them yellow, but I want to show you a more powerful method. I'll click the apply button though to apply these changes and then return to Photoshop. You can see the Viveza adjustments have been applied as smart filters below the smart object. The next method I want to show you uses the Nick Color Effects Pro plugin. It's worth mentioning, you probably wouldn't use all of the filters I'm showing in this video because the results could become too strong and look unnatural. Again, I have a warning message that I'm editing a smart object and I can click OK to close it. But before I do anything else, I'm just going to apply some dynamic contrast to the scene using the Pro Contrast filter. This is something I do a lot because it helps to lift most images and brighten them. There are now a couple of filter options I can use to enhance the autumn colours. Probably the most powerful is the Indian Summer filter. This selects the greens and yellows in the scene and changes them to red or orange. I can control the colour produced by changing the method in the drop down at the top of the filter. There's also a slider to adjust the strength of the effect. The only problem with this filter now is that it's affecting everything in the scene which doesn't look natural. But if I add a negative control point, I can protect areas of the image like the grass in the foreground. I'll also protect some of the trees on the left of the frame. 
If you look at the control point, you'll see that it has an opacity slider, which defaults to zero when it's a negative control point. This is what's hiding the filter's effect. But if I increase the opacity slider, you start to see the effect in that area. The other filters I can use to enhance the autumn colour is brilliance and warmth. I can use this with the positive control point to further enhance the warmth of the foliage. It seems to work best when there's already a yellow or orange colour to the leaves. As a final adjustment to this image, I'll use the dark and lighten filter to create a vignette effect around the edge. Back in Photoshop, you can see the difference when I turn off the smart filters. I can then finish off the image with any additional effects that I want to use. As you can see, the finished image now has a much more autumnal feel to it. The Knit Collection has some great tools for enhancing autumn colours. Whilst I've shown you a few options in this video, you don't need to use them all on the same image. In fact, you'll probably get better results if you don't. I hope you found this video helpful. I'm Robin Wally, you've been watching Lenscraft, I'll see you soon for another video. Thank you.